Gordon Parks, How the Photographer Captured Black and White America by Carol Boston Rutherford. Illustrations by Jamie Christoph. The youngest of 15, Parks arrives stillborn and is nearly left for dead until a dip in ice water shocks his tiny heart to beat. The baby is named for the man who saved his life. Dr. Gordon. When young Gordon crosses the prairie on horseback, nothing seems beyond reach. But his white teacher tells all her all black class, you'll all wind up porters and waiters. What did she know? After Gordon loses his mother at age 15, he moves in with his sister in Minnesota. Soon on his own, Gordon works odd jobs, busboy, piano player, and finally, porter and waiter. 25 years old and all but broke when a magazine spread about migrant farm workers inspires him to buy a used camera. That $7.50 is the best money he will ever spend. In one month, he teaches himself enough for an exhibit at a camera store. Soon he is shooting fashion and portraits. One model tells him to take his camera to the big city. In Chicago, Gordon's shots of struggling families on the south side win him a chance to be a government photographer. He leaves the Midwest and turns his camera on Washington. Gordon wonders, what should I shoot? Search for a subject, says his boss. In the nation's capital, he passes the White House and the Supreme Court. In the shadow of the Capitol, he sees black families living in alley dwellings. He can see that blacks have it harder than whites. He passes statues, monuments, and memorials to mighty heroes. But there are enough photos of white men carved in marble and granite. He glimpses whites only signs in shop windows and learns firsthand that even if there is no sign, it doesn't mean that a black man will be served. Boiling mad, Parks vows to lay bare racism with his lens. He shares his vision with his boss, who points him toward his subject. Talk to her. She knows struggle. She is Ella Watson, a cleaning lady in the building where Parks works. She supports her grandchildren on just over $1,000 a year. The photographer follows her for weeks, home, church, and to work at four in the afternoon. After a long day, she studies the Bible with her family. Gordon takes pictures of her grandchildren too, dressing, eating, reading, playing, not yet knowing the racism that they will surely face. Over his long career, Gordon's photos will run in Vogue and Life magazines, their first black photographer. He will write novels, make movies, compose music and poetry, and will be hailed a renaissance man. A renaissance man is someone who's good at many things. But Gordon's most famous shot will be American Gothic. In the newspaper, the photo exposed to the nation the unfairness of segregation. Standing before the flag of freedom, cleaning lady Ella Watson holds the tools of her trade and the hopes of her grandchildren. 
She knows all too well that the opportunities the flag symbolizes are denied her because of skin color. Yet she dares to dream of and strive for better. Through Gordon's lens, her struggle gained a voice. You don't have to hear her story to know her prayer. A disadvantage sometimes pushes you. You know, if you use it right, because you want to uh, uh, rid yourself of, 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 of those things that hurt you emotionally when you're coming up. Here, Parks created one of his most famous photos, a portrait of Ella Watson, a cleaning lady in a government building. I first asked her about her life, what it was like, and it was so disastrous that I just felt that I must photograph this woman and in a way that would make me uh, feel, uh, make the public feel about Washington, what Washington, D.C. was in 1942. 